so we are going out to give the goats their treats we have these treats we found at tractor supply that have probiotics and everything in them so they're vitamins but they're treats and the goats love them Okay. Here. Hey, right here. Right here. Plenty. <laughs> Follow daddy. Hey guys. <laughs> so they love getting brushed. I think Chan really likes it. Chan and Franny. Franny likes it too. Jesse is warming up to it. He wasn't too sure about it. <laughs> Chan's like me. <laughs> okay, baby. Don't eat my camera. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, so I'm out here and I am picking peppers. I have got pretty much every kind of pepper that I grew this year needing to be picked. We've got some cubanelles. I've got Got some bell peppers. Got one that fell down back here. Let's see if it's so good. Yeah, just needs to be cleaned. We've got bell peppers. This guy was kind of smashed in, be in between some stems. Let's check that out. Uh, what else? I got, of course, gazillions of the Chinese five color back there. And I mentioned in my last video that I've set a goal for myself that I want to can at least three batches of things every single week. And so far this week, I have canned another batch of potatoes, which I'll be canning some more of those. Uh, we do eat a lot of potatoes, so canning, canning a good bit of them just makes life easier. Um, so I will be doing more of those. And I actually had a few people mention canning raw pack, that it's a little bit easier to do. And so my next batch, I'm actually going to do that and see what we think uh, as far as any difference in um, the end result. And so, like I said, I've canned the potatoes and I also canned yesterday a batch of split pea and ham soup. Um, it's the recipe that is in the Ball Blue Book. It's not my personal split pea soup, um, just because I don't know the acidity or, and I don't know if my soup can be canned. And so I tried this recipe from the Ball Blue Book. It, it's a little bit thin. I, I made it the way it said to. It's not as thick and hearty as my own recipe, um, but it is the one that is, you know, tested for being canned and it smelled good. So I went ahead and just did a batch of that. I'm really experimenting on recipes and trying out different things that I see um, in my canning books and things like that because, you know, there's, om <laughs> there's only so many pickles that you can make and there's only so much jam that you can make 
and so preserving things in other ways is always it's a, it's always a great thing to experiment with so these are the loose shower paprika peppers and these particular peppers i dehydrate and i dry them so that i can later uh, grind them up into my own paprika spice and i've grown two varieties i need to get my basket <laughs> So I've grown two kinds of paprika pepper this year. Uh, one variety is these Luchara paprikas, and then the other one is the Alma paprika. And I do have a few in here. Um, I think I might have a couple that are just about ready to harvest. Oh, yep, I see one right back in there. So you can see the difference. You've got the... Oh, You've got these sort of uh, cubanelle, uh, pepperoncini sort of shaped Luchauer paprika pepper. And then you have, and this has a thin wall like a banana pepper would. And then you have this variety which is thicker and this is more like a meteor pepper, like a bell pepper. And these have this bright deep orangey, orangey red color as opposed to the deep red of the Luchauer. So there are two different types of paprika. And when I'm drying them, I'm storing them in their own containers separate. That way I can grind them up separately to determine which variety I like better. So this year's pepper harvest has been pretty amazing. And I've got way more peppers than we could ever use fresh. So I have been doing a lot of experimenting uh, with preserving peppers in different ways, whether it's dehydrating or different pickling types of recipes and canning recipes. And tomorrow I actually plan on um, canning some peppers, but not pickled. Um, I was looking through my uh, one of my canning books and there was a recipe in there for pressure canning um, peppers in just water just doing a normal raw pack pressure canning uh, sort of method and I thought you know that might be a great way to preserve a lot of these extra peppers because I've got peppers coming out my ears um, and then that way I can use these peppers in recipes down the road but not have the flavor of them altered like pickling would and I'm surprised I hadn't noticed this recipe um, in any of my books previously but I've got a lot of pickled peppers and so I'm gonna go through and can some peppers that way tomorrow I'll do the bell peppers and then I think I'm also going to do some jalapenos and uh, we'll see what else we do. Because I've already made multiple batches of jalapeno jelly and it is delicious. But I don't consume a lot of sugar, don't need all that sugar. And while people love getting jelly as gifts and I do enjoy giving it as gifts, uh, you know, I'm not doing all of this work to to uh, give it all away you know what I mean I, I want to have these peppers and, and have this food in my pantry to feed my household this winter so I was out here the other day clearing the flower bed over there pulling about pulling out a bunch of weeds my flower beds have been a little neglected <laughs> the past several weeks because I've spent so much time working in the gardens and I was out there well you can still see my ladder back there I was trimming the wisteria that I have growing on the trellis there 
It provides shade in the afternoon on the front porch, but you've got to keep it under control because it will, it'll go crazy. And so I was trimming it and then I got busy pulling weeds and stuff out of the flower bed and I was doing it barehanded and I should know better because there's poison ivy growing over there. Mm -hmm. You know, my whole life I have walked through poison ivy. I've stomped all through it. I've sat in it. And to be honest with you, I didn't even know what poison ivy looked like until just a couple of years ago. And when I realized what it looked like, I was like, you know, pretty sure I've used that for toilet paper in the woods before. <laughs> but brushing the leaves and such never, never does a thing to me. But I have reacted to poison ivy twice in my life. And both times it involved me breaking vines. So note to self, wear gloves. <laughs> So now I will say there are a couple of varieties um, that I grew this year. I grew the classic, I think it was the California Wonder Bell Peppers, Tam's Jalapeno, um, the Pepperoncini, the um, Luchar Paprika, the Alma Paprika, Sweet Lesia, Sweet Myra Peppers, Chinese Five Color, Jigsaws. Then I had the Volunteer, um, Tabasco peppers that came back out in the big garden and most of the peppers did great. The jigsaws were really pitiful. Um, the one out in the big garden was my biggest one which was still nowhere near as big as most of my other pepper plants but they are beautiful. They're very ornamental. I think I would grow those again and and probably just grow those in a pot or in the flower bed or something like that because they are beautiful but they just they don't get very big they really are more of an ornamental pepper um my tam's jalapeno have done fantastic the luchar paprikas have done really well the alma paprikas have done okay i haven't gotten anywhere near as many of those as i did the luchar paprikas uh, my bell peppers did great. This is my first year that I've had a really big harvest of bell peppers. Um, so I'm really happy about that. Um, however, there are a couple varieties of peppers that I'm just, I wasn't too impressed with. You know, besides the jigsaw, which, you know, like I said, that was just more for looks, I think, than anything else. Uh, these are the sweet Myra pepper. And I have several plants that I've I've grown, I have some in this bed, I've got them out in the other garden, and I've, I've really gotten very few peppers um, from these sweet myra plants. And they're, they're just kind of like a sweet bell pepper. Um, they're they're thick-walled, kind of meaty, but they just don't do that great. Um, the, the plants stayed really small. They're, they're maybe a quarter the size, if that, of most of my other pepper plants, and they've produced very few peppers. So I don't think this is one that I will grow again. Uh, the other one is the Sweet Lesia. What did I say? Yes, this is Sweet Myra. The other one's the Sweet Lesia pepper, which is that very kind of pointed triangular pepper. Just, it, it's okay. I mean, again, it's very similar to a bell pepper. Um, I, I think I would rather grow like the lipstick peppers, which I grew last year, and they were very abundant, very similar to a bell pepper. So the Sweet Lestia and the Sweet Myra are ones that I won't grow again next year. Um, I do enjoy experimenting with different types of peppers. I mean, you've got your classics that you always want to have, like your jalapeno and your bell pepper and stuff like that. But I do enjoy experimenting with different types of peppers and and it's funny because I actually don't like spicy food. <laughs> I am a wimp when it comes to spice. Um, but I think peppers are fun to grow and they're really cool looking in the garden. You know, all that color and, and all of that and I've been doing really well with my peppers the last couple years. So that is it for today. I'm going to finish up picking peppers out here and head on in because it's starting to get dark. 
So thanks for hanging out with me in the garden today and talking about peppers. My name is Constance from Cosmopolitan Cornbread and I will talk to you all next time.